Approximately three centuries ago, the great French scientist Blaise Pascal demonstrated that pressure exerted anywhere on a confined fluid, either gas or liquid, is transmitted undiminished in all directions, with equal force exerted on all equal areas. Today's fluid engineering makes use of this principle in a very practical way. Power is transmitted from one location to another by fluids flowing through pipes. The input source of a fluid system is always electrical or mechanical. The power is converted to an equivalent amount of fluid power by means of an air compressor or hydraulic pump. After this conversion takes place, it can be transmitted a moderate distance through piping and then converted back to mechanical power by means of a linear moving piston or a rotating fluid motor. During this transition, Appropriate valving is added to control the direction of flow, to regulate the rate of flow, and to limit the pressure. This entire arrangement is referred to as a fluid power circuit or system. The basic purpose of a fluid power system is to transmit power from an input location through piping to an output location. Power input to a fluid system is nearly always mechanical. Mechanical power is converted into fluid power. This example shows a hand-operated input piston, converting mechanical power into fluid power. At the output, control of the piston speed and position must be maintained even if the stopping point is in mid-stroke. This and similar applications, whether high or low power, can only be accomplished satisfactorily with hydraulic power. Boyle's law states, the absolute pressure of a confined body of gas varies inversely as to its volume, provided its temperature remains constant. Simply, this means that the volume of a confined gas is reduced by one-fourth by compression. Its absolute pressure after it has been allowed to cool to its original temperature will be four times its original pressure. Compressing air raises its temperature according to Charles' law. Boyle's law is not one of the invariable laws of nature, such as the law of gravity. It refers to a perfect gas. Compressed air very nearly follows the law at pressures less than 1,000 psi. However, hydrocarbon gases, such as propane and methane, do not follow Boyle's law. is a gas. Gases have various properties that we can observe with our senses, including the gas pressure, temperature or T, mass and the volume or V that contains the gas. Careful scientific observation has determined that these variables are related to one another and that the values of these properties determine the state of the gas. The relationship between temperature and volume at a constant number of moles and pressure is called Charles and Gay-Lussac's law in honor of the two French scientists who first investigated this relationship. Charles did the original work, which was verified by Gay-Lussac. They observed that if the pressure is held constant, the volume, V, is equal to a constant times the temperature, T. V equals constant times T. Charles' law has little or no effect on air systems because it is referenced to a zero base of negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. A change of a few degrees at plus 85 degrees Fahrenheit has very little effect on the volume or pressure. While absolute pressure is always higher than gauge pressure by the amount of a barometer reading, generally 14.7 psi, absolute temperature is always 460 degrees higher than the reading of a Fahrenheit thermometer. <laughs> 